even though it's only 32 seconds long, I think it's powerful because of this. A lot of people have prayed and 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 prayed. And what if I told you was praying the wrong way? What if I told you that uh, I'm going to give you a, a scripture here in the Bible and I'm going to give you a new way to pray? That, see, a lot of times what I really believe that, that goes on at churches, we call it prayer meeting, but really it's not a prayer meeting. It's a gossip session. Oops. Oops. A lot of times we, we say we come to church just for our own benefit, but not for the benefit of others. When the church people start realizing that, it's, that you're in it to win it for Jesus Christ and that I'm here today not for me or not for my own benefit or not to see how, how much education I've got, the bra bragging rights. A lot of times I go to conventions and a lot of times, you know, all it is is bragging grounds. Well, I've got my doctorate. Well, you're still silly. <laughs> all you are is a religious nut. You say, Brian, that hurt my feelings. No, I'm being honest with you. Because a lot of times we get so educated, we're no earthly good. And what God is trying to impact and what God is trying to say in this church, in the 21st century church, is that this. If we really believe that the outpouring of God through His Holy Spirit is here today, like I know it is. And if we really believe that there is power in prayer and power on our knees and power to change things, which I believe. I'm not going to pray them old sissy prayers no more and be insulted by people that says prayer doesn't work. Isn't it amazing that, that, that if you talk about Buddha, nothing happens? Isn't it amazing that you can talk about any other God that you want, but if you mention the name of Jesus, it offends people? Isn't it amazing? You just mention Jesus, and all of a sudden they go, you, you, you offended me. But what I'm trying to tell you today is this. Hey, if y'all shut them back doors, th that would be so awesome. Because here's the deal. I'm not, here to, I'm not here to make you happy. So if you need to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom now. Come on. There ain't no way. Listen to me. In school, you don't get up 100 times through, your, through school and go to the bathroom. You give God your attention today. And God will change you from the inside out. Yeah. Now, I know some of you are already mad. And you're not going to like this service too well. But here's what I'm telling you is this. We're so busy anymore, we don't give God opportunity to even speak to us anymore. Hmm. You say, well, they went the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Watch this. <laughs> God's bigger than a bathroom break. God's bigger than a cigarette break. God is so big, you can't stop my God. It's all right. I'll preach to 10 that want it. I'll take 10 filled with the Holy Ghost and wanting to make a difference for Jesus Christ. I'll take 10 and we'll turn Campbellsville right side up. Hallelujah. We will. You say, Brian, where are you going with all this? I don't know. <laughs> but here's what I do know. There's a reason and a purpose that you're here today. And man, I, I don't want to preach for 30 or 40 years, Scott, and stand before God and God says, Brian, all the power, all the glory, all the exegesio, all the power of God is in that. But what happened? I don't want to stand before God one day. He said, Brian, there was thousands of prayers that was up in heaven waiting for you to pray, but you just didn't believe. I don't want to die as old pastor one day and y'all bury me and say, well, he's a little long-winded. He loved the Lord. No. I want a son stand still life. Glenn, I want Elkhorn Baptist Church to see the sun stand still. I want you as a guest or a, a visitor here today. You're not a visitor. You're, you're, we are honor you today. But, man, I want you to have a sun stand still prayer life. And I want you to be direct toward God. 
So before I even preach today, before you even turn, we'll go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter 10. If not, it's on the big screen. But I do, before I even preach, I want you to do me a favor. I want to ask you to do something. I want you to mark in your Bible, or I want you to mark on a piece of paper, an area in your life where you need the sun to stand still. I want you to you say, Brian, I don't mark my Bible. Well, here's the deal. A dirty Bible leads to a clean life. So I want you to mark in, in your Bible where you need God to intervene on your behalf, where you need a miracle. How many of y'all need a miracle besides your preacher? If your hand's not up, you, you need a miracle. You need, you need a miracle in your life. Listen, if you won't be honest with God <laughs> and you won't interact with God and you won't let God in, that's your first problem. You need to let God in to see what's going on in your life. So many Christians, man, I'm telling you, they don't have a sun stand still prayer life. See, the sun will never stand still until you address the issues of your life. Never. You will never have a sun still prayer life or a life until you address the issues in your life. And watch this. That's why most Christians are miserable. That's why America is the richest nation in the world, but the most highly depressed nation in the world. Right. We sell more Prozac. We got more drugs going in, the, in here. Listen to me. You say, well, this is Camelsville. Don't be naive. Don't be naive. Every time I preach, I told you I preach like everybody in my, under my voice is lost. I don't preach like everybody's saved because here's the deal. God called me to preach to the lost. So I pretend today that everybody here is lost away from the Lord. So I pray that God fills me with the Holy Ghost and burns me from the inside out, consumes me from the inside out, and everybody leaves here today saved. How's that sound? Yeah. Pretty good deal, huh? Good deal. If you have your Bible, Joshua chapter 10. This is the intro to Sun Stand Still. In verse 7 it says these words. I'm sure some of you have read this before. But write down. Write down where you need the sun to stand still. Write it down. Family, finances, relationship, marriage, anger. Got a bunch of mad Christians. It's horrible. Where do you need the sun to stand still? Verse 7 says, So Joshua marched up from Gilgal with his what? Watch this. He left nobody out. And watch this. God leaves nobody out. Nobody. Red and yellow, black and white, we're all what? Yeah, watch this. Including all the best fighting men, the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. And listen, that's a word. I, I, that's not even in my sermon I'm going to give to you. You don't have to be afraid of your problem. Your problem should shake because who you are in Jesus. Man, listen, you should wake up on a Sunday morning, a Monday morning, or a Tuesday morning, and the devil goes, oh, no, Tommy Hughes is awake again. The devil should be afraid when you wake up on a Monday morning. The devil should be, you should interrupt his schedule, man. The devil, when Brian Keith Rafferty wakes up, the devil goes, oh, no, Rafferty's awake again. Yeah, that's the way the devil should look at you. He should sit and say, you know what it says? The Bible says this, that the gates of hell should not prevail the church. That's me and you charging hell. That ain't hell charging us. That's me and you going against hell. Because you say, well, Brian, I, I don't understand. Hell should shake when your eyes go boop. When you wake up, Satan says, oh, no, Sheila Moore's awake again. She's going to mess up today. She's going to mess up my plans. I come to give death and steal and rob against people, but Sheila Moore can't stand that. And she believes in the Bible, and so she's going to make a difference. Sun stands still. Sun stands still. Look here. Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Look in verse 9. After an all-night march from Gilgal, Joshua took them by what? Surprise. Surprise. The Lord threw them into what? I mean, this is such some powerful, powerful. It's going to be a good series. I'm excited about it. He threw them into confusion before Israel, who defeated them in a great victory at Gibeon. Israel pursued them along the road, going up to Beth Horon, and cut them down all the way to all them big words, good gracious. Okay, we're going to go on. Verse 11. 
as they fled before Israel. You know, maybe you'd be reading the Bible and all of a sudden you got all them big words and you got David thrown in there. <laughs> good gracious. Anyway, it's good though. It's God's word. As they fled before Israel on the road down to Beth Horon. Oh, Lord, here we go again. And the Lord hurled, listen to this, what he done. He, he placed large hailstones down on them from the sky. And more, listen to this, and more of them died from the hailstones than, than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Here's my, here's my verse, my theme verse where we're going, verse 12. On the day of the Lord, listen to this. On the day the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said, Joshua prayed this prayer. Listen to this. He said to the Lord in, in the presence of all of Israel, O son, stand still. I want that to get in your spirit. O son, stand still over Gibeon. O moon, over the valley of Abijon. So the sun, what did it do? Stood still. And the moon stopped till the nation avenges itself on its enemies. It is written in the book of Ashar. Listen to this. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down. Listen to this. About a full day. <laughs> One day it just stopped. There has never been a day like it before or since when the day when the Lord listened to a man. Surely the Lord, listen to this, surely, surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. Then Joshua returned with all Israel to the camp of Gilgal. I'm going to give you one, one reason, just one reason why this miracle in Joshua 10 means so much to me. Y'all ready for this? Say amen. amen. This story is my story. I read this in the Bible, and, and to give you an intro, I think God is going to display me publicly before you because this story is my story. How many of you have ever gotten yourself into a mess? <laughs> and you knew only God was the one, that, the only one that could get you out Amen. of the mess. But how many of you know God is the master of getting people out of messes? Amen. I'm looking at a bunch of messes, <laughs> hallelujah, that's now a bunch of messages. Amen. I'm looking at a bunch of people this morning. I know you're sitting there going, man, I can't believe I'm at church today. I heard people say, I can't believe so-and-so at church today. Watch this. I can't believe Brian Keith Rafferty's at church today. Y'all clap about that, won't you? I can't believe it. How many of you are thankful that God, that God looks beyond your faults? He looks beyond your messes. Hallelujah. And, and, and God, I don't know about you, but Jesus is my help. He's my deliverer. He's my stronghold. He's my peace. He's my rock. Hallelujah. He's my great deliverer in this house this morning. He's my God. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He's my God. He's on time. He's every time. And I know some of you are looking at me and saying, well, Brian, he's not on time right now in my life. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. You say, Brian, I wanted my prayer last year. What if I told you you couldn't handle it last year? What if I told you you wasn't ready for your prayer to be answered last year? What if I told you that God's got you here today to tell you these words? You need to have a prayer life, a life that the sun would stand still. Here's what I've learned about God. He will take a, a mistake and, and make it a miracle. Now, I want y'all to read my lips this morning. I'm not going to hesitate. I'm not going to back down off this. Listen to me. Listen to this, Pastor. God is still in the miracle working business. You got a pastor in front of you, don't believe that when the apostles died, Jesus stopped working. You got a pastor in front of you that believes in everything that the Bible says. He still works signs, he still works miracles, he still has blinded eyes come open, he has the lame legs to walk. Somebody needs to give him praise because he still works miracles in this house today. You are a miracle in this house today. And God will touch you like he's never touched you before in this house today. He still is God. Hallelujah. Here's what I have found to be so true. So many people read the Bible, but they quit believing when it comes to miracles. Bobby, you're a miracle. Gary Reynolds, you're a miracle. 
And we so often quit praising him because you forget about the miracle he done for you in your life. Here's what I, Joshua saw God's power like never before. Let me ask you a question this morning. When was the last time you seen God's miracle, God's power in your life? When was the last time you seen the sun stand still in your life? When was the last time you laid hands upon somebody and they got up out of the bed? You say, Brian, not everybody has the faith like you have. I will correct you today. The Bible says that God has given everybody a measure of faith. Everybody here today can lay hands upon the sick and they shall arise. Everybody here today can pray that prayer. Oh, son, stand still. And the son will stand still. You say, Brian, do you really believe it? That's what makes me different from a lot of you. I do believe that. And I don't, listen, here's what's wrong with the churches today. We try to tell why God can't do it. And I'm sitting telling you today why God can do it. Some of you need the sun to stand still in your marriage. Some of you need the sun to stand still in your finances. Some of you need the sun to stand still in your life. In your life. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be something to die? <laughs> I wrote this down. Wouldn't it be something to die and never see God do a miracle on your behalf? Donna, why are we alive? I mean, y'all be honest with me. I'll interact with you on a Sunday morning. Why are you alive? Why are you here today? Why do we even exist as a church, as a people? How did Elkhorn Baptist Church, why did Elkhorn Baptist Church even come into existence? Because see, if you don't know that, you'll you be like a leaf floating in the, in the wind. You'll be tossed to and fro, back and forth, until you finally figure out why do you exist? Why are you even alive? Blake, my son should have been dead this week. Blake, listen to me. You are alive for a purpose, son. <laughs> Woo! My God, if an 18-wheeler can't take you out, ah, my God, you're alive in this house. Amen. You can't stop him. You say, Brian, you're crazy. No, you crazy. You can't stop God. Amen. And I'll preach like a madman just come out of hell. I don't care. It's the truth. We need some Elijahs to arise. If there's 450 prophets of Baal that are against you, you can rise up. And if God be for you, you'll slay the giant in the valley. Hallelujah. Can't tell me, my God, if my God will do it for anybody, he'll do it for me. I'll stand with the word of God. Listen, watch this. If God can make the sun stand still in just a moment... I believe in a worship service like this, he can make the sun stand still again, Greg. If the atmosphere of God is right, the sun will stand still. Y'all listen, that's a good word. If the atmosphere is right, the sun will stand still. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're coming into your prayer life with a bad attitude. Maybe you're coming into your prayer life that, that you deserve it. Maybe you're coming into your prayer life saying, God, daggone, I'm tired, and this is my last prayer. I've heard that from people. Well, I just quit praying. You lost your miracle. <coughs> Y'all got me? Well, I, I, I'm just, I, I, Lord ain't going to do nothing for me anyway. You lost your miracle. Y'all hear me? I want y'all to get this in your spirit because I believe somebody here today besides me that's right now you're in the valley of a decision. Man, you're, you're at the threshold of making a silly, crazy, dumb mistake. You're giving up on your prayer life. You're giving up on your children. You're, you're in the valley today. But can I tell you, God wants the sun to stand still in your life. He wants the sun to stand still. See, in a, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we'll believe the Bible that God's going to come back and God's going to do this and God's going to do that. But do y'all really think about this? Do y'all really believe the sun stood still? Now come on, church. Do y'all really believe that there was a man named Daniel in a lion's den? 
how come you're doubting your prayer life then? I'm just saying, if we, <laughs> if we really believe what we say we really believe, how come you're questioning? How come you're doubting when God is wanting to do a miracle in your life? He's wanting the sun to stand still right now. And you're questioning him. You're questioning God. But you believe the sun can stand still? You really believe that one day the eastern skies are going to divide? And somebody on a white horse that come on is going to come back? But God can't answer your prayers? <laughs> Let that get down in your spirit this morning. You really believe that they killed Jesus? You really believe they put him in a borrowed tomb? And you really believe after three days he got up, but he can't answer your prayer life? Have you lost your mind? <laughs> hey, have you done went off the wall? See, I believe. <laughs> I believe in everything I just told you. And that's what's going to set you aside, Donna. When we quit acting like we know the Bible and we become the living word, hallelujah. That's what sets people aside. That's what makes other people call other people crazy. Well, I heard this before. People say, I wish I could pray like Brother Brian. You can. I wish I could preach like Brother Brian. You can, you can run circles around me. But the difference is this. I've got the conviction of Christ in my life that when I preach, I'm not naive that everybody's going to heaven. What makes churches different and people set aside is that when they pray, they walk away saying, God, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you that my kid's not doing drugs and marijuana and LSD and cocaine and crack and meth. God, thank you. That, that, Lord, you woke me up this morning. I, I should have been dead, hallelujah, a long time ago. Lord, thank you. That, Lord, I, I'm coming out of this old valley. Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. I need somebody to, for just five seconds, give God a thank you that you're alive today. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You better stand to your feet because some of you are not thankful for what God has done for you in your life. I'm talking about, Bobby, the doctors gave up, but thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that she's alive today, Lord. I knew it. I knew it. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Kurt, doctors gave up on you. Oh, but thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. I really believe we don't thank you. That's right. God, I feel the presence. Thank you. God, I thank you that I get to preach to all these beautiful people. I am so humbled. I can't even hardly walk anymore when I think about the goodness and the mercy and the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. And I'm not saying it this morning for a hand clap. I'm telling you that I really believe God sometimes has to put you in a mess to make you say thank you. And sometimes you've got to go bankrupt to make you realize, oh, my God never, never has ran out of money. See, this is my story. This is my story because this is something only God can do. Y'all listen to me. I'm almost done, believe it or not. That first service last week messed me up. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I finally felt the Holy Ghost. No, you didn't. You felt you. Thank you, Lord. See, here's what God keeps telling me to tell you today. And I, I just got to share this with you. Some of your prayers are insulting God. Oh, my God, I offended some people. Some of your dreams... That you have been dreaming is insulting God. 
And I know that's hard. I know that's hardcore. But it's true. I've heard people pray these prayers, and maybe you have like I have. I wrote this down. Lord, be with me today. Brian, if you would read your Bible <laughs> and believe this, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, I'll never leave you or I'll never forsake you. Well, Lord, here's a good one. Is it your will that I die of cancer? Is it your will, God, that I die of diabetes? I hear, I hear this all the time. You are insulting God. Oh, this mess, y'all. Oh, y'all, look at You think this is bad? You come back next week. And you think next week's bad? You come back two more weeks. Some of your prayer lives are insulting God. Some of your dreams are insulting God. If you realize who loved you, who was in you, and who's going to be with you, who will never leave you, you will never lose when it comes to Jesus. Not only God's will that you die of cancer. I'm a, I'm a, I don't care if I get in trouble for this all my life. It is not God's will for people to die sick. And I'll stand alone in that. I've heard it from this church. Well, sometimes it's God's will. No, it is not. You name one person that died sick of a disease when Jesus was alive, and I'll take your advice. You'll never find it in the Bible. God says, here's these words that God says, Shannon. God says, I wish for you to be in health and prosper such as your soul prospers. I have plans for you not to hurt you or to harm you, but to prosper you. Sounds like he loves his children. What kind of daddy would throw a sickness on his child and say, oh, go ahead, you can take it. There ain't no daddy. I'm, I'm a fleshly daddy. And there's no way I would ever flow, throw a disease on my kids. And after I died, are you, have you lost your mind? Don, if I died for disease, even in the flesh, I would sit there and say, oh, something's missing. See, a lot of your prayer life, here's what, here's what y'all ready for this? I'm trying to help you. I, I hope y'all leave today saying, man, I, I understand that son saying still prayer. Notice this in the Bible. He said these words, oh, son. He, he didn't do this. Oh, son, I know the earth should revolve around you. Scientology tells me that. Oh, son, I know that you revolve. Oh, son, it just don't make sense when I'm getting ready to pray. And, Lord, if it be your will, I really need the son to stand still. Don, he did not pray that. Check this out. This will help y'all. Y'all ready? I've heard people pray 20 minutes over a meal. Y'all have to, haven't you? I used to do it. I did. But watch this. You don't have to sit and thank God for all that. Because you're what? You're praying over what? Are y'all okay? When you sit down to eat and you got a big salon in front of you, filet mignon, baked potato, cotons, hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, if I'm eating with you, and you sit there and you start saying the ABCs and one, two, threes, and thank you for Granny and Papa, Louie, Dewey, and Chewy, <laughs> I'm going to say, Lord, I thank you for a steak. I thank you for a cow. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you for the beef. <clears throat> thank you for the tater. Hater, whatever y'all want to say. <laughs> Lord, I'm eating it. Thank you. I'm not going to sit there and pray 20 minutes over a potato. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell y'all is this. I'm being honest with you. Can I shoot y'all straight? Thank y'all. Um, when you sit down to pray, say, oh, son, stand still. You don't have to pray 20 minutes over a table. <laughs> Somebody please say, y'all get this. Oh, son, stand still. He didn't sit there and say, God, I know it's going to be complicated. 
I know only you can do it. He already knew he, God was the only one to make the sun stand still. We know God is the only one that can shake the world. We know that God is the only one that can heal. We know God is that. Just thank him. Y'all getting this? Well, I thank you that Blake's coming out. Amen. Now, that's powerful prayer right there. That's some powerful prayer. God, thank you that Billy Ray's getting up. Billy Ray's going to get better. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for what you're going to do. See, you get a whole lot farther with God by thanking him than you're just sitting there complaining. That's good preaching. That's good. So you say, Brian, what, what, what's the deal here? So here's what I'm trying to tell you. Here's what I wrote down. Question is this. The big question is this, and I'm done. Can God trust you where you're at? See, a lot, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Y'all hang with me. A lot of you are praying for something bigger in your life, and you're not even faithful where God's got you. How in the world can God give you more if you can't even handle less? Mm. Uh, I don't know if y'all can feel I can feel this stuff. So, oh, Lord, bless me. I want to be a millionaire. You can't even handle $100. Lord, bless me. I want to be a school teacher. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. All right, Lord, I've got you. I'll shut up on that one. Lord, I want to be a preacher, but you don't even come on Sunday nights and Wednesdays. I want to do this for you, and I want to do great things for you. You can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So what God just told me to stop by today here at 3145 Elkhorn Road is these words. You, God is, listen to me, you're not waiting on God. God's waiting on you. God done died. He's done got out of the grave. He said he's coming back. Everything's said. Everything's done. But can God trust you where you're at now? If you're not faithful with where you're at now, you'll never be a good steward with where you're going. It's good. Preach it. Somebody say, preach it, Brian. That's good. Glory. Yeah, oh, glory. We can't leave Tom out this morning. Y'all think it's loud in here today. Y'all wait till next Sunday when Tom Bradley gets back and Robbie Bell gets back and all the people who've been in the presence of Jesus gets back. I'm telling you, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. You know what? And it shouldn't take. Tom Bradley to get us pumped up. It shouldn't take Robbie Bell to get us pumped up. We serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and I can give him a shout with him or without him. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, son, stand still. The demographics don't look too good. It's going to rain today. Oh, son, stand still. Oh, cancer, I bind you by the authority in the name of God. When Bobby was going through his stuff, I learned more stuff. There he was, my, my father, my, my man who blessed me and prayed blessings and miracles and signs and wonders upon my life, who taught me the Bible. Because I was a religious young man, wasn't I, Bobby? I even told Bobby. I said, Bobby, ain't no signs work anymore. I said, all that stuff died when the apostles died. Uh, and Bobby just squared me up. Uh, he said, will you please show me one verse in the Bible in the Bible that shows that you're right? And I'm like, yeah, I'll be back. That's been like 20 years ago. But anyway. <laughs> oh, it's good to have you home. See? I'm learning. Let me ask you, are you meek? Are you teachable? Can, can God, do you hear God like you once did? Man. Oh, son, stand still. Oh, God, thank you for the sanctuary. God, I thank you that every blue chair is filled up. Oh, son, stand still. God, I, I thank you for that. We got the best children's program going. Thank you. Oh, son, stand still. We ain't got to sit there and tell them about mom and daddy Louie Dewey. We ain't got to do it. Uh, Y'all 
getting this? Be pointed. Be direct. Share your heart. Oh, sun stand still. Don't make sense, but guess what happened? All day long, the sun stood still. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And people, man, people pray, and there's nothing wrong with prayer, okay? Don't get, listen, don't go home and say, well, Brother Brian rebuked prayer. No. Brother Brian says it's good to pray. We need to pray. That's our communication with God. But listen, you don't have to tell God you're sick. Oh, that's good. That a priest right there. We don't have to tell God all them things. You tell God, listen, oh, son, stand still. Oh, devil ain't nothing but a liar anyway. See, the devil is the one that makes you think you're sick. You know what God told me along, especially when I come back to be y'all's pastor? He said these words. Y'all ready? I hope it's don't mess them up. He says, Brian, you got to deprogram people. You got to deprogram people. Oh, we're good. We go church. We're ordained. We're, we're reverends. We're pastors. We're, we got a doctor degree. But what God tells me is this. You got to you believe you're worthy of a miracle. Y'all got it? Everybody write that down. I am worthy of a miracle. Becca, you are worthy of a miracle. You've got a miracle growing right now inside of you. You are worthy of a miracle. Yeah. Amen. You sure are. You're worthy of it, girl. I don't care what anybody says. You're worthy of it. Brandon and Sarah are going to have a baby tomorrow. Isn't that amazing? It's about dang time. Sure is. You're worthy. Turn to your neighbor. I want you to look them dead in their eye. And I don't want y'all be fronting and conning either. Tell me, you are worthy, come on, of a miracle. How does that make y'all feel? <laughs> worthy. You've got to get out of your mind what other people said about you. You should be able to look in the mirror and say, dang God, you did good. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Y'all look at me like, that boy, nut. Yeah. Because I believe it. And Dana tells me so. So long as God and Dana loves me. <laughs> gotcha. See, we all need a sun stand still prayer life. We all need a sun stand still life. Question is this can God trust you where you're at? Are you faithful to go forward? Or there may be a reason why you're not going forward because you're not faithful where you're at. You're not thinking where you're at. I am in awe that I am the pastor of Elkhorn Baptist Church. I am amazed. And I got to thank God for where he got me. And guess what? We're going. We're going forward. I am worthy to see a miracle. I will. Watch this. I will see a miracle today. See, y'all got this? I will see a miracle today. I will see somebody saved. I will see a miracle today. I will, I will, I will because I can, I can, I can. See, y'all sitting there going, well, it just don't work for me. I'm glad it works for you, Pastor, but it don't work for me. Oh, son, stand still. I'm telling you, the thing that we're lacking, praise team, y'all come, the thing that we're lacking is you're not pointed with your prayers. There it is. That thing you wrote down, y'all ready for this? That thing y'all wrote down on, in your Bible and on your piece of paper, <laughs> now what you need to do is say, God, thank you for answering my prayer. You're pointed, you, you're there, you're thanking him. You're not going around it. Well, God, you know how they are. God, you know what's going on in their life. Lord, it, you made them take care of them. Lord, you, if they quit doing this. and Lord, you think God don't know that? Do, we, do you think God don't know that I got ADHD? Do y'all, y'all, yeah. Do you think I surprise, watch this, this is good. Do you really think you're surprising God with your prayer life? Whoa. 
Lord, I'm going to tell you something new today about me. Lord, you've never heard this one before, but Lord, I'm going to tell you this one. Lord, you know what Susie did to me last night? Lord, she's crazy. Lord, she's just crazy. And y'all think we really surprised God with her prayer life? And all God said, I know Susie crazy. I made Susie. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. But God loves Susie yeah. as much as he loves you. What about if you turned your prayer life around and said, God, I'm really wanting to say Susie crazy. But Lord, she got potential. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's how you guys pray. God knows about your marriage. God knows who you married to. God knows they got home at 10 o'clock last night. But what if you were to say, God, I've been doing this all wrong. I want to thank you for what you're doing in my husband. I want to thank you that my baby's coming. I want to thank you that both my babies came. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's how you pray. God knows that something's going on in you. God knows that Lexi's struggling right now, Susie. Thank you. You getting this? See, real quick, verse 9 says his words. Y'all ready? It says he still had to draw his sword. That's a good word. Because we oftentimes pray. That's it. God's going to do what God wants to do. So I'm just going to pray and sit. Don't really matter what, what I pray about anyway. God's going to do what God wants to do. So I'm just going to sit. See, what God keeps telling me is this. you got to draw your sword. I, I refuse to be a dead church. I refuse to have old stinking average marriage. Y'all all men say, yeah, I'm going to go hallelujah. I refuse just to barely get by in my life. Oh, I could. I could get up. Here's what, here's what most Christians say. I, Brian's a diabetic, and Brian took a shot this morning. He's got to take a shot tonight. Bless his heart. He's got the signs of depression and anxiety. He's got black under his eyes, and he gets mad all the time, and la, 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 la. That ain't me. Have y'all lost y'all's mind? That is not me. Amen. Brian Rafferty is healed Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, son, stand still. Yeah. He's not depressed. He's just happy. He just smiles all the time. He's got wrinkles around his eye because that's all he does is smile. And wrinkles come up and that's another smile. It ain't depression. That's smile. But it's how, oh son, stand still. It's how you're pointed in your prayer life. In other words, you ask, then you take what? Action. Get ready for this. He prayed, then he drew his sword. <laughs> he prayed, and then he drew his sword. In other words, steward, he said, God, I prayed it, and I'm ready. Ask and action, ask and action, ask and ask and action. Y'all got it? How many of y'all got the word today? I know I was a little long, but I want to give it to you, okay? I want to give it to you today. Can you handle it? Where are you at right now? Did you write that prayer down? God, here it is. I'm pointed. I've got action. I'm not going to say, oh, God, it don't look good. I don't feel good today. No, God, thank you that it's happening. You got it? You ask, then you got action. You'll never go forward. Watch this. Until you're faithful where you're at. Watch this. Y'all ready? It's hard for me to say, but I'm going to tell you anyhow. I could not handle 707 people like last Sunday when I first became your pastor. It's hard. Because, man, I want to say, oh, yes, I could, Lord. I could. And I'm learning. I'm telling you the truth. When I met Dana in 1994, I couldn't handle the woman she is today back in 1994. I'm learning. I'm growing. I'm getting stronger and better. Y'all got this? 
Love you, buddy. You say, Brian, does that bother you? No, does it bother you? Why would a kid hugging me? <laughs> I like it myself. So let me ask you something. Are you faithful where you're at so God can take you to a higher level? Ask action. Ask action. Be pointed in your prayer. Oh, son, stand still. Quit telling God what he can't do and tell God what he is going to do. Now, God, stand to your feet. Let's go. All right, I don't know where you guys are at, but I'm done. Don't y'all get too happy. Oh, son, stand still. Oh, marriage, stand still. Oh, family, stand still. Oh, son, stand still. Father God, do your thing. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Speak today, Lord, in Jesus' name. You guys come. Come on. How many of y'all need a sun stand still prayer life? <laughs> a sun stand still life. How many of you need to be more pointed in your prayer life? Ask in action. Ask in action. So what about it? Was it just for me today? Oh, son. Stand still. Oh, son. Stand still. Oh, son. Stand still. Is your prayer life insulting God? Is your dreams insulting God? After what all God has done. Oh, son. Stand still. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, son, stand still my marriage. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, Holy Spirit, come on. Come on. If you need Jesus, you come. Oh, son, stand still. If you need to join this church, oh, oh son, stand still. You come. Come on. Come on, man of God. Oh, son, stand still. I've been praying the wrong way. I need a new way to pray. I need a new way to pray. I've been dodging the problem. And I've been telling God what's wrong with it. Oh, son, stand still. Oh, son, stand still. Come on. Oh, son, stand still. Oh, son, stand still.